Folks, thanks for tuning in to the Wanneroo channel. Hope you all are doing great out there today. We have our new 45 ACP project coming to the channel here. Project Poor Man. And so in this video, I'm going to be going through what this project is about. Uh, going through all the different things that we picked, uh, picked out to do this project with and why. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's something a little bit kind of different. And uh, so it should be a good project for everybody. Uh, also, too, some housekeeping before we kick it off. I just got awarded Amazon Influencer status. So uh, the cool thing about that is I was able to build out my store on Amazon. So you can check out the link to that below. Basically, I curated all my favorite stuff, all the things that I use and enjoy using uh, in my store. So feel free to check that out. Support the channel. It just kicks back a tiny commission to the channel if you purchase. And uh, the more support we get, like I say, the more videos we crank out. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe as well. So what is Project Poor Man about? And uh, especially here, we're going to be using the hand press. So the reason why this came about is two reasons. One of which is, frankly, all of my presses right now are jammed with so many projects um, that uh, there's no way we're going to be able to get this project in with everything and the way it's all stacked up right now. Uh, so we are going to revert to using our Lee hand press for this. And I thought uh, also too that would be a good excuse uh, for a lot of folks out there that are unsure about reloading or they simply do not have the money to reload uh, or they're just really kind of sparse on funds um, that you can you can get started reloading uh, pretty cheaply and inexpensively and just get yourself started. Uh, these days out there, I know what it's like. Uh, we have crazy inflation. Uh, obviously, all the corona stuff caused a, quite a bit of damage throughout the economy, people's businesses, livelihoods. I have my own story with that. Uh, it certainly has done a lot of damage uh, you know, in my life. And um, I know for a lot of folks out there with a lot of the way the 2020s have been, it ain't been easy. And um, I've had conversations with different people, not only here, but also in Australia as well, where, hey, um, they might not have much or have much money, but maybe they still want to shoot a little bit and get out there and enjoy shooting. But of course, the price of factory ammo these days is totally insane. Uh, and uh, there are, you know, there are some better deals now. Uh, but it's not like it was during the Trump years. And, um, you know, uh, 9mm, I think, has come down to more of a reasonable price point. But 5.56, five, oh, that's crazy. I mean, and that's why we'll probably be doing a 5.56 five, project on the channel here soon. Uh, because the price is uh, it's just outrageous. I paid like uh, 80 cents a uh, round or something, the other, or 90 cents a round the other day. So it's totally crazy. <clears throat> so the reason why we're going to use this hand press is this is how I got started reloading. Uh, back, uh, let's see, back in 2013, uh, I had been contracting with this one business, long story, um, but basically um, they went bust and all the contracts disappeared. And I went through a period there uh, for about six months where I didn't really have much going on. Um, and fortunately, 2014 ended up being one of my best years ever. So like everything in life, you will rebound and uh, things will get better if you keep working at it. But anytime I have a slowdown in work, I always look to learn some new skill. I didn't have a lot of money and it was a thing of where it was like, okay, uh, I want to learn a new skill. I want to learn how to reload. I want to learn how to save myself some money reloading and you know, establish some degree of self-sufficiency. I uh, didn't have room for a bench, didn't have a bench, whatever. And uh, so um, found that you could get this Lee hand press. And I had actually seen, uh, saw a video, I think it was like on the Truth, <coughs> Truth About Guns website or something. This one guy was sitting in his living room and loading ammo with this Lee hand press here. And I thought, man, that is perfect. I uh, looked around for some deals and ended up buying this for $30 at the time. Uh, prices have gone up on them a bit, um, but you can still pick them up or also too. Uh, you can pick them up used on eBay as well. They're, I'm sure they're used out there on eBay. Um, but uh, also they are available on Amazon, so you can pick them up. Uh, I, put, I think I put it down in my store, uh, so you should be able to find it there. But the nice thing about this is that it's super portable. Um, you can take it anywhere. 
Uh, it's basically like a, almost like a Suzanne Summers uh, thigh master pretty much in uh, kind of how it works. Um, probably the only complaint I would have with it is that I wish this was maybe just a little more kind of stout whenever you're, you know, uh, resizing or expanding a bunch of brass. Uh, you just have more room for your hand and stuff. And you do have to watch in here you don't get your finger pinched because uh, it'll hurt like a SOB uh, if you have that happen. This functions just like a regular reloading press. You can take it anywhere, uh, use any standard uh, dies up here, and um, that's how I got started. So I bought one of these, uh, bought a die set for 9mm, and just started uh, cranking out ammo and learning how to do it. And that's how I got going. So I thought for this, uh, I wanted to use the hand press uh, pretty much all the way through for everything that we do. Uh, because for those of you out there that are debating about whether you do want to reload or not or you don't have a lot of money, uh, you can get one of these and try it out. And my thinking at the time was, I was like, hey, if I don't end up enjoying this or liking this or whatever, um, you know, I don't have that much money that I put out for this. I haven't bought a big press, haven't bought a bench and all this other stuff. Um, you know, pretty much I had this. I got one of those Lee Perfect Powder Measures. Got a few things like a case gauge, um, calipers. I got a Lee uh, primer tool, which we're going to bring out of retirement for this project here. Hopefully this works. I haven't used this for years now. Um, and, you know, so you do have to buy some other things, but those things too will last a long time. I mean, if you get a die set or whatever, this is my original 45 ACP die set. Um, as long as you keep them clean and look after them to last decades, you know, so... Uh, a lot of this stuff here will last decades once you put the money out there for it. So you got to look at it that way. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the hand press. So I'll show you all how to do that and uh, how that works. And like I said, for those of you that are looking to get into reloading, uh, you know, see what you kind of think watching this video. Uh, the reloading uh, of all of our ammo and everything will pretty much uh, be the same as just if we had a bench press. But we're just going to be using this instead. Um, for the die set here... We're going to be going with our Lee 45 ACP die set for this. And uh, the thing, uh, I got started with Lee pistol dies from the get-go. and Pretty much uh, still use them for most everything, I think. Um, and the one thing that is good if you are a beginner um, and you're just starting out reloading, uh, the, th the instructions for the Lee die set are the most straightforward and illustrated of any company out there. And that is one thing with Lee. Uh, they're very good about their instructions, in my opinion, compared to some other companies. Um, and uh, some of the other companies, they kind of talk at you like you've been doing it for 20 years and you already know everything, which is fine if you have been. But for a lot of new guys out there, they, you know, there's just a lot of little nuances or details they don't know. So instructions are very good. These are also the most affordable typically of all the pistol die sets and you have the four die set you have the lee crimp die if you get the four die set you get the lee factory crimp die which will allow you to do crimping as a separate function so this is a good set to start with um, then priming now these days uh, i use a fact i use a rcbs uh, if i'm not on the progressive press i use a rcbs um, uh, bench mounted priming tool this uh, Lee tool here, it still works. I think the small one, this is where the small pistol primers here. It's a little bit sticky. I've done tens of thousands of primers with this though. Um, I think I bought this for like 20 bucks. This is the old primer tool. I've not used any of the newer Lee primer tools. Um, so I can't speak to how good they are or whatever. Um, but probably these older ones are still out there. The other thing with Lee, is you do have to have uh, specific uh, sh uh, shell holders for it because they're not like your regular shell holder. Um, they don't have that bottom uh, edge that slides in pretty much. It's just a flat bottom there. So it's a little bit different. You can't use your regular shell holder. So you got to get this set uh, with this older one. I don't know how the new ones are. Uh, I can't speak to that. But uh, anyways, um, if this does not work for some reason, because it's been out in, in retirement for many years now, uh, I'll just use my RCBS tool for uh, uh, bullets. Let's talk about that. Now, for bullets here, this is one of those uh, areas where people are probably already looking at, at this and going, wait a minute, that's too expensive. Well, here's the thing, guys. 
I should do a video on how to save big money on reloading. People are always shocked at the different deals that I get and all that. And pretty much what it comes down to is Intel. So, you know, I, I've signed up with a bazillion companies out there on their emails. I get their emails every day. And also you have to have a degree of patience and a degree of planning. And a lot of that is buying in bulk. And so, for instance, uh, Mid-South, they had a special going where uh, this uh, 250 uh, uh, bag, uh, 250 count bag, 230 grain Hornaday full metal jacket bullets, uh, 53 bucks as I recall, um, just this past month. This is the same price as getting uh, Barry's plated bullets. So uh, for me, I've used these Hornaday full metal jacket bullets for years and years. Uh, they're f fantastic. Um, so, you know, compared to plated, Hey, if I can get them for the same price, so that's the thing, guys. Uh, in order to save money, you got to be prepared to save up your money for a bit and buy in bulk, pretty much. Um, now, can we go with like a cast option that's cheaper or something like that? Sure, you can do that if you want to. Um, you know, go for it. Um, the load might be a little bit different, whatever. The overall length might be different, all that. So just keep that in mind. But the 230 grain full metal jacket bullet is pretty much a 45 ACP standard going back nearly 100 years. And uh, that's what I kind of prefer to stick with. I know there's other bullets out there. We will do other 45 ACP projects and other bullets. <clears throat> but these are readily available, easy to get. And like I said, you shop the sales and get them on special. And they don't really, like in this case, they didn't cost me any different than plated. So just get the full metal jackets. Primers. Oh my primers wow all right so i know a lot of folks go, i can't find large pistol uh, now let me tell you out there right now so what i did specifically for this i have my own stock of large pistol primers i got thousands of large pistol primers i have two different manufacturers for this i said you know because i know a lot of folks out there they're probably i can't find large, you know all that so i said i'm gonna go out there and i'm just gonna get what's available and I purposely, deliberately, on different, you know, whenever I'm out there on business and all that over the past month and a half or so, is I've been going to stores in different states and my state and all that and just looking to see what they got, okay? And I haven't had any problem finding, for one thing, Remington primers. In fact, like one gun store I went to, they had tens of thousands. They had boxes, like, you know, they had uh, not only were the shelves stocked, but down below, they had cardboard boxes that were just, you know, filled with the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the regular thousand uh, primer boxes. And uh, the boxes were just sliced open and sitting there, and there were just tens and tens of thousands of primers. And I haven't had any problem finding these Remington number two and a half large pistol primers. They're out there. And like I said, seen them in multiple states. I've seen them at Cabela's, Bass Pro. Those are national uh, um, national stores that are all over the place. Uh, seen them in local gun shops, small gun shops, big gun shops. They're out there. So for this, I went with this and went out there and bought these deliberately just for this project, just for you guys, uh, because this is what's available out there right now. You shouldn't have any trouble finding Remington uh, large pistol primers. They're out there. Um, and if you can't find them locally, get online and yes, they go in and out of stock and all that. Sign up with all the different vendors and just keep watching. They're out there. You can get them. I know, like I said, I didn't have any trouble finding them across multiple states, multiple stores, large and small. They're out there. Now, of course, the problem with primers today, what is it? They're still charging outrageous sums for primers. Everybody knows it don't cost that much to make a primer. Uh, but they're still keeping the prices jacked up on them. And that's just the way it is. If you didn't stock up when times were good, well, you're paying the price now. But it is what it is. So um, this is what we got. And I paid $10 per 100 for them. So pretty damn pricey. Not what I really wanted to do. Like I said, I have uh, plentiful stocks. But I did it just for this project to show you this is what's out there. Next thing, <coughs> brass. So we have different options here on brass. Um, obviously, the, the best thing to do if you can is, uh, you know, if you're starting out and you don't have a lot of money, you can scavenge range pickups, especially if you go to like IDPA or USPA, USPSA match and you shoot 
Uh, it depends on the match. Sometimes you do have some matches where, as part of compensation for the people that work the match, they get to keep all the brass. Um, you have other matches where when the match is over, you can go and you can pick up whatever brass to your heart's content. So that's a good way to get uh, a lot of brass because most of the time at the end of a match, you know, if you have 40 people turn up for a match, you know, uh, once everything's put away, most people are going to bugger off pretty quickly. And you might have three, four guys there picking up brass. And you can hoover up a lot of brass pretty quickly. Um, you know, so that's an option. Um, the thing with this is, yes, I can use brass from my range. Uh, it's a wide variety, different types and all that. Um, the only thing is right now, because I have so much stuff going on, um, to get into cleaning this and, and, and all that, uh, it's just going to take extra time and slow the project down. So we're going to put it to the side. And what I did was, is again, what is out there? Well, <clears throat> went out there and got some Starline brass from Cabela's. Now here's the funny thing. I picked this up on sale. I don't know if it's still on sale, but it was on sale this month and last month. January 2024 and uh, December 2023. Uh, it was on sale at Cabela's and you could actually get this cheaper, $22 for $100, uh, cheaper than the Starline website, as I recall when I checked. So there you go. Keep your eye out open for those deals out there. And the thing I always notice with Cabela's is most of the stuff they pretty much charge high retail for. But the funny thing is, is that almost always year round, there's always some reloading bullet or some component or something that, you know, or brass or whatever, they'll have like a real weird funky sale on. It's almost like a loss leader where it's just, uh, it's cheaper than anywhere else you can find it. And it's usually only one or two or three things, but I just keep my eyes open. And the other thing is uh, for relatives with me is that, uh, you know, at my age and everything, uh, sisters, parents, whatever, uh, it's easy for them just to get me a Cabela's gift card, like for birthdays and different Christmas, whatever. Um, it's easy for them to do that. And I can go there and there's all kinds of stuff for me to get. So usually I have a couple of Cabela's gift cards around, you know, they're good gifts. Um, so got this on sale, pretty cheap. Now, a lot of folks say, Hey, I'm a poor man. You know, I don't, I ain't got a ton of money for this stuff. Wanneroo, you know? Um, well, here is one thing to remember uh, with a lot of reloading stuff is that you got to look at it as an investment and then eventually a return on an investment. And a nice thing with 45 ACP brass, it's a low pressure round. I'm still shooting 45 ACP brass from the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, the, the oldest one that I have that I keep reloading is, is a piece of uh, Western Cartridge Company from 1953. And I just keep reloading that over and over and over again. 45 ACP brass typically does not wear out. Um, now, obviously, you got to shoot it in an area where you can recover your brass, so that kind of helps. But, um, you know, once you buy something like this, pretty much it's going to last years and years and years and years. And it might even last the rest of your life. Um, now, eventually, you know, pe you know, pieces go missing and stuff. Um, you know, it seems like every time I shoot, if I shoot a box of 50, you know, probably one piece of brass is out there missing somewhere, you know. But, um, you know, typically it's going to last a long time if you look after it and do your part. Uh, so think of it as an investment that you're making for the long term. Now let's talk about powder. All right, guys, for powder, this is what we're going to use. And I thought about this for a couple of weeks um, in terms of what are we going to use for this project for powder. I got a lot of choices. I got stuff sitting on a the shelf. There's stuff out there I can buy, whatever. And... I decided to go with tight group. Now, funny enough, I was going through some old videos today, updating them and all that. Just, you know, just checking over old videos and just putting some updates in or whatever in the description and this and that. And uh, there was actually a guy that asked me about um, tight group uh, for 45 ACP and somehow his question fell through the cracks. So apologize for that. But two years later now, I've responded to him and said, hey, check out, we're going to be doing a tight group uh, video here soon. But the reason why I picked tight group is uh, for several reasons. And um, uh, for one thing, the thing that I have found with tight group is that as a powder for 9mm 45 ACP, it works wonderfully. Uh, it's very accurate. It's not a troublesome powder. Also, too, because it's a low charge weight powder, which means that you don't need a lot to, uh, to get, what you, get done what you need done. Um, 
It also is not sensitive to how it's positioned in the brass. So in other words, like uh, there's a lot of powders out there that are very sensitive to excess air in the cartridge, all that sort of thing, and kind of how the powder is positioned. You know, it's laying on its side or, you know, however, depends on how much powder's in the cartridge or whatever. Uh, this doesn't have any of that sensitivity. The other thing with this is that it is typically one of the cheaper powders out there that you can purchase. Um, this eight pound container, my dad bought this as a birthday present back in 2014 for me for 118 bucks. And I cannot get rid of it. <laughs> I keep using it and using it and using it. And here it is, an eight pound container. And I swear, it's like the, it's like it's making its own powder or something. I don't know. But there's still at least half half of the container in here and I've been trying to use this stuff up for years and years and years but the thing is is that I did the math a number of years ago I think you can get well over 10,000 rounds out of one eight pound container so one hell of an investment here with tight group and it just keeps working and working and working and working and it just takes forever to use up and it's cheap uh, now, these days, of course, what have they done? Well, of course, we're living in these, uh, you know, times of inflation uh, and all that. Uh, they say, oh, it's 3% uh, inflation. No, yeah, everybody knows it's 30, 40, 50, you know, 75, 100% inflation. Um, tight group now has gone up. I think it's like for eight pounds, it's 218 bucks or something. But let me tell you guys something. For as many rounds as you can get out of this container, you can't go wrong with tight group. Now, there is one little caveat with it. Because it's a low charge weight powder, so you're only using a couple of grains of powder typically for most loads, you do have to pay attention because it is possible to double charge a case. So you have to have that awareness uh, when you're doing your thing that you do not double charge a case. Um, so just have that awareness. There's a lot of other fluffy powders that kind of fill up the case more. This one does not, so you have to have that awareness. Other than that, tight group works good. If you guys have other comments about tight group down there, I want to hear about it. But I've used this for years, very happy with it. Um, it just works. It works and it's cheap. So that's why we went with it. And, uh, you know, I'm expecting good results out of this. Okay, folks, so that's our introduction here. Um, stay tuned for part two. We're going to be getting into resizing and expanding and possibly priming and then we will move into um, how we do our bullet seating and crimping and all that and the powder drop i don't have my old lee perfect powder measure that has sailed off into another world now uh, many years ago so we will have to use just a regular bench mounted powder measure that'll be just one little difference there but um, yes it's going to be a lot of fun and i just wanted to show folks with this video that even if you don't have a lot of resources at hand where you don't have a lot of space, you don't have a lot of money, um, you don't have maybe even the ability to get a bench, uh, whatever it might be, you can get started reloading with just a couple of things and at least get yourself going to where you'd establish some degree of self-sufficiency where you can reload your own brass. And um, you're not entirely self-sufficient, but believe me, uh, as I have experienced through all these different panics and stuff, once I build up enough of my own supplies, bullets, primers, uh, powder, all that stuff, um, you know, with brass, I can use it over and over again. And I don't have any worries about when nine millimeter goes to 50 bucks or whatever it is, or these crazy prices right now for five, five, six, where it's like almost a buck around at the store or whatever, uh, where you establish some degree of self-sufficiency and save yourself some money and you can start out with simple tools. So we're going to have some fun with this. Y'all leave your comments down below. Uh, we'll be kicking off the project. I want to finish this up in a relatively short time. So there's going to be a couple of videos with the project and I'm going to try to kind of keep them pretty tight together. Uh, so that way we finish this project, we move on to other projects we have. Also too, check out my other videos. We got Project Big Booty going on right now with 300 Blackout um, and other things that are coming up as well. So. Stay tuned and uh, keep watching the videos and any comments, let me know below. All right, we'll see y'all next video.